tonight. What Microsoft's massive layoffs mean for Android, Xbox, and the employees. Plus, how New York could halt the Comcast Time Warner merger. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 131 for July 17th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by NatureBox. Order great tasting, healthy snacks delivered right to your door. Forget the vending machine and get in shape with healthy, delicious treats like coconut date energy bites. To get 50% off your first box, go to naturebox.com slash twit. That's naturebox.com slash twit. I'm Father Robert Balasares. Today's top story, the massive layoffs coming to Microsoft. We yet have a picture of what departments will most be affected by those layoffs. Joining us today is Mr. Ed Bott from ZDNet. Ed, thank you so very much for joining us. It's my pleasure to be here. Now, Ed, most of the focus has been on the number of layoffs, but that's not the whole story. Along with the pink slips, Microsoft has announced some serious restructuring of its products and services. What do you see as the most significant of those moves? Well, I think they're, they're twofold. Uh, they haven't so much restructured as done things that should have been done years ago. Uh, the first is to change the engineering processes that go into building a lot of those products and services. And that's designed to make the, uh, the process of developing the software and services and delivering them to customers more rapid and more agile. We've seen that a little bit with Office 365 and uh, the, the numerous updates to Windows 8 and Windows 8.1. And I think you're going to start seeing that across the board at Microsoft. The other thing that we're going to see, uh, the other thing, that the big restructuring that Satya Nadella talked about in his email to employees last week is about making sure that uh, Microsoft products and services are available across platforms, not just on Windows, but on other ecosystems as well. We've already seen Office for iPad. Uh, we're going to see Office for Android later. And in fact, we're going to see a lot of emphasis on both of those platforms in addition to Windows in the next year or so. All right. Now, Ed, do we yet know how these layoffs are going to fall department by department? Well, we, we do know that the bulk of them, 12,500 out of the 32,000 or so employees who came over from Nokia uh, when the acquisition closed in April, uh, will be given pink slips and severance checks. So that's 12,500 out of 18,000. That leaves 5,500 people. And I suspect, although we don't know for sure, that the uh, that those are not going to be uh, in specific departments, that rather you're going to see specific roles being targeted. So middle management, uh, if you're a middle manager at Microsoft, uh, you should probably be looking over your shoulder right now, because one of the goals is to flatten the org chart uh, and make it easier for the individual contributors to deal directly with management. Uh, and you're also going to see uh, a reduction in dedicated test staff, uh, so that you'll see the processes uh, involving more developers uh, uh, testing their own code. Uh, so there's a there's a flattening of the engineering process that uh, will result in some of the, the the layoffs. And I think you'll see those across the board, across uh, all sorts of departments. And there's also an interesting subplot here concerning Android. By shuttering the Nokia Android development team, Microsoft seems to have settled the question of whether or not it was abandoning Windows Phone. Is this Microsoft doubling down on their mobile platform and completely closing the door on Android? Or is this just the elimination of a lackluster product? No, I think this is uh, a, a very strong commitment to Windows Phone and a very firm rejection of an experiment that Nokia did just before the, uh, the, the, the sale closed. Uh, with introducing the Nokia X line at Mobile World Congress in February, and then uh, having the X2 line, which was introduced last month after the sale had closed. I, I think this is just one of those things that the new CEO has come on with a, a, a sort of checklist to say, what's what things are we doing right now that we shouldn't be doing? And let's just clear them off the list. Let's just cut these things down right away. So you saw things like the decision to bundle Connect with the Xbox One, uh, which uh, Satya Nadella reversed. And this is another one of those ones where they said, nope, we're going all in on Windows Phone. 
According to Mary Jo Foley, we have another subplot, and that concerns the Xbox. Microsoft is shuttering Xbox Entertainment Studios, which was tasked with creating content from Microsoft's Xbox franchises. Is this a half-hearted measure to appease street analysts who wanted Microsoft to spin off Xbox and focus on their core competencies? I don't know whether that's the motivation behind the move, uh, but it certainly will be the practical effect of it. Uh, there are a lot of people who looked at that and saw an indulgence, uh, a, uh, a desire to somehow get into Hollywood. And, and what you've seen in the last few months, again, is sort of a refocusing of the, of the Xbox platform on traditional gaming. Uh, this doesn't fit in that focus, and as a result, uh, out it goes. Now, there's a few projects that they have underway that they're going to be allowed to finish, but uh, this is another one of those things where I think it's it's out of there. And the analysts who were calling for a, a spinoff of Xbox will probably look at this one and say, well, okay, it's better than nothing, but I don't think it's going to satisfy them. It's Ed Bott from the Ed Bott Report from ZDNet. Uh, Ed, can you tell the folks where they could find you and your work? Uh, ZDNet.com slash blog slash bot is the best place. Or just look me up on Twitter. Uh, I'm there all the time. Ed Bot, thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks. Coming up next, the Facebook app only the famous can use. But first, I'm going to say something that's going to surprise you. You should be snacking more. Yes, you need to be snacking more. Why? Well, I've discovered NatureBox. NatureBox snacks have zero trans fats, zero high fructose corn syrup, and nothing artificial. NatureBox sends great tasting snacks right to your door with free shipping anywhere in the United States. Well, here's how it works. Click on the continue button to choose between three subscription options, then place your order. Once you're a member, you can select which snacks you'd like in your monthly box. You can select by dietary needs, vegan, soy-free, gluten, conscious, lactose-free, nut-free, and non-GMO. You can also select by taste savory, sweet, or spicy. The next time you get cranky and hungry and are ready to eat anything, remember Nature Box. Snack guilt-free with coconut date energy bites, Santa Fe corn sticks, pear praline crunch, and over 100 more healthy choices. To get 50% off your first box, go to naturebox.com slash twit. Stay full, stay strong. Go to naturebox.com slash twit. And we thank Nature Box for their support of Tech News Tonight. And now straight to the tech feed. Last week, FCC Commissioner Michael O'Reilly publicly stated that the evidence he has seen seems to indicate that the public doesn't care about net neutrality. Well, he may want to look at his evidence again. As of this morning, the FCC has received over 1 million comments on FCC Proceeding 1428, the proposed rules on net neutrality. This total includes submissions through the website, which crashed under the load earlier this week, and by email. To put this in perspective, the FCC received about 1.4 million comments after Janet Jackson's wardrobe malfunction caused a national outcry in Super Bowl 38, forcing both the broadcasting industry and the FCC to change their operation procedure. No one has gone through all of the comments yet, yet the general assumption is that the vast majority are pro-net neutrality submissions. Since the FCC extended the deadline, you have until midnight tomorrow if you desire to leave your comment with the FCC. And while we're on the subject of the Internet, the Comcast Time Warner merger could be in the hands of the state of New York. In May, Governor Andrew Cuomo announced that the state's Public Service Commission would use its new regulatory power to conduct a thorough and detailed investigation into the merger. This means that Comcast has the burden of proving to the PSC that the merger is in the best interest of its consumers. If the PSC decides that the merger is a bad deal for New Yorkers, they could refuse to transfer the Time Warner franchise to Comcast, cutting the company off from 2.6 million customers. Investors in the merger could then kill the deal. It's just one state, but if New York nixes the deal, other states could come to the same conclusion. Aereo is not a cable company, so says the United States Copyright Office, according to a letter obtained by CNBC. The company stopped operating after the Supreme Court ruled against the television streaming service in June. Aereo was hoping to rebroadcast TV programs once licensed as a cable company. In the letter, the Copyright Office says the Internet retransmission of broadcast television falls outside the scope of the Section 111 license. No word yet on Aereo's next step. Oculus VR is working on motion controllers, gadgets that let you handle virtual objects and control virtual vehicles. Perhaps. 
These products haven't yet been, haven't been announced, and the information is based on anonymous sources. In fact, despite all the press, Oculus still hasn't shipped their VR headset. The product is likely to ship next year, hopefully. In creating its own controllers, Oculus, which Facebook bought for $2 billion in March, will be competing directly against several companies that have bought into the platform and supported them with a controller of their own, according to a report on CNET. Oculus has reportedly worked on a variety of tracking techniques, and they've tried magnetic fields, infrared lights, and cameras to detect the location and movement of Oculus users. But no matter what Oculus does, a virtual reality platform will need some form of elegant control as well as an accurate way to track users in meat space. It could all come together next year. The long-awaited dream of consumer VR is virtually here. Maybe. Google released its second quarter financial results today and exceeded Wall Street's expectations. The company earned revenues of $15.96 billion, a 22% increase over the same quarter last year. However, the profit picture wasn't quite as rosy. Google reported $3.42 billion in net income, which is higher than the previous year, but not by much. Google will account for more than one-third of the world's digital ad spending, vastly more than the number two competitor Facebook, which will own about 8%. Google also revealed that its investments in infrastructure keep rising. The company spent a whopping $2.67 billion on data centers during the second quarter, double from last year's second quarter, and triple what it spent two years ago. The company also announced a major executive change. Google Chief Business Officer Nikesh Arora will leave Google to work for SoftBank. Omid Kordastani, who has long served as an advisor to the Google founders, will replace him. And finally, if you're famous and special, then you too can use the new iPhone app called Mentions from Facebook. The app lets verified public figures post public content. The idea is to encourage more movie stars, musicians, and the like to create posts, photos, and videos that the rest of us, mere commoners, can feed on. There is also a Mentions tab that should make it easier for public figures to see what others are saying about them. Sounds like fun? That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2 and write to us at TN2 at twit.tv. Don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Father Robert Balasair. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.